here at the Gentlemen's Expo in downtown Toronto where hundreds of vendors have joined forces to create a haven for all things man. We came here to find out what, if anything, people know about Snooker Canada. We are here in the big boys with cool toys section where some awesome stuff is going on behind us but in front of us we've got some pretty cool stuff happening as well. Tell us who you are and what you're doing here. My name is Harjus, uh, here just to check out Gentleman's Expo. My friend Kish Style has a booth here. Just here to support him and see what uh, Toronto has to offer really. So there are a lot of cool things going on. We obviously have our Snooker Canada booth here. Have right. you ever played Snooker? I have a few times. Uh, Snooker is a great sport. It's a, it's a nice dynamic different uh, from pool, which is, it's, a, it's nice, it's a little different. So tell me how you got started in it. Was it a family thing? Uh, yeah, my dad played pool as a, as a teenager. Uh, he taught me the ways, and then from pool, we kind of expanded into snooker, and we took some chances. It was nice uh, to chase a ball rather than just play on every ball, and it was, it was something different, something that had a different dynamic to it. So what was your favorite thing about playing snooker? Uh, I love that it's a little more challenging, that you're not just chasing any ball, but one ball in specific. So you got that gold, you've got that target. And with anything in life, really, you always are looking at that one thing and looking to move forward from there. And snooker is kind of that dynamic to life almost. So it, it, it inspired me and gave me kind of enjoyed it. Thank you so much for chatting no with problem. us. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> We are at the True Fit and Hill booth here at the Gentleman's Expo. We've got a fine gentleman with us. Tell us who you are and what you're doing here today. Uh, my name's Alan Morris. I'm here just to see what's going on. Been here last year. Found it really interesting, so I thought I'd come in again, look at everything that I have to show. Very cool. So tell me, what, if anything, do you know about snooker? Um, when I was a kid, my dad used to run a pool hall. <laughs> so I used to work with him on the weekends after work when I was like 8, 9, 10 years old. So I used to go in and watch the pool tables. I couldn't reach the table, but I used to watch all the time. It was phenomenal. So tell me, like, take me back down memory lane here. What kind of memories do you have associated with that time? Uh, lots of good memories, matter of fact. Um, my dad was a great player. He used to play uh, the snooker ball. He used to sit there and watch him. As I got older, I used to play myself now and then. Didn't have a lot of time, but really enjoyed the game. It's more finesse than what they have nowadays. I find snooker is more of a professional, uh, more finesse playing. You got to really know what you're doing and be really good at your shots. So they call it a gentleman's sport, which I'm sure that you agree with. So if if it came back, if snooker came back into popularity, do you think that people would watch it on national television? Oh, I think so. I think so. Because all you see nowadays is people banging the ball around. There's really no, like you do the bump shots and all that, but it's not the same thing. I would think it would be a great thing to bring back into the market. Well, thank you so much for chatting with thank us. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> We are here in the King's Crown booth at the Gentleman's Expo. We've got a fine gentleman sitting with us here. Tell us who you are and what you're doing here today. My name is Rakesh Mystery, and uh, I'm here just to experience the Gentleman's Expo and see what's out here and uh, what booths are offering different products and services. So tell me, what, if anything, do you know about snooker? Um, it's a pretty fun game. Uh, it's a billiards game and uh, involves, obviously, different colors and uh, playing through that as opposed to pool which is numbers based. So have you ever played it before and what has been your experience with that? I did play when I was younger. Um, I haven't played in a few years now, but um, it was fun. It's uh, definitely a tactical game where you have to look at opportunities and know your opponent and where their strengths lie on the table. So who taught it to you? Was that something that passed down to you? Yeah, my uncle, he, uh, he taught us the game. He, um, when he moved to Canada, to kind of to acclimatize him, we, we bought a snooker table, so it was something that made him feel back home in England where he'd go to the pubs and play. So do you think that if Snooker Canada started playing national games, would that be something you'd be interested in watching? I actually do watch it on TV, so um, <laughs> I'm, I, you know, when TSN plays it, uh, I do catch uh, 
any uh, late night feeds of uh, the games down in England and stuff like that. I know it's very popular with women now as well, so it, it is catching on. So it's exciting to see its uh, growth and development. Great. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> so we are standing here with a London native who has come all the way to Canada and playing snooker here. So tell me, when did you start playing snooker and what do you like about it? Uh, so I don't play snooker like from time to time, not really pretty frequently. But um, what I like about it is that it's a very tactical game and it's very satisfying if you get like a good run of play. So if someone was looking to start snooker playing themselves, what would you give them as advice? Um, try to practice as much as you can uh, on a regular basis um, and don't be afraid. <laughs> so who taught you? How did you learn how to play in the first place? Um, no one taught me. It's really, like as I said, just go out there and try it out. And I think it's quite a fun game if you like, especially if you start like playing pool, then snooker is like another level I feel. So if, if snooker came and started playing on national television, is that something you'd be interested in watching? Oh yeah, of course. I watch snooker like every now and then, like Masters, the World Championship as well. So if it's on Canada, then yeah, why not? Great. Thank you so much for chatting with us. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. So we are here with snooker world champion and snooker legend Cliff Thorburn. So Cliff, let's start off from the top. Let's talk about your accomplishments in this sport. Uh. 14-time Canadian champion, but who's counting? <laughs> uh, former world professional snooker champion. I was the first uh, so-called, you know, overseas player to have won the championship. I was probably the original Russian hockey player, kind of a thing. And right. you know, uh, he's good, but he's not one of us. <laughs> you know, they uh, they didn't like like a lot of people didn't actually like it too much. It sort of, you know, like they got a little personal here and there. But I guess that happens in every sport. But uh, you know, first, you know, a three-time winner of the Masters, which, which is a big tournament that's held uh, at um, uh, Wembley over in England. It's a very uh, big sporting uh, uh, stadium and complex, and and just a few other things. But uh, I'm still playing, and uh, you know, still do the odd senior thing. But I'm uh, I'm really into coaching now, and uh, just I think that a lot of people need some help along the way with whether it's coaching or just getting them to play. Period, and I think that. Uh, Snooker Canada is trying really hard to get that going. I, I haven't done a lot of work with them, but uh, uh, they're on the right track, that's for sure. So let's take a little trip down memory lane here. When did you start playing snooker and why? Uh, I started playing, uh, uh, I was, a, well, the first time I just played a couple of games, but um, I lost my, I was caddying out in Victoria, and I, I lost, I did two rounds, and I lost my money to a fellow playing snooker and it, uh, that, I didn't play again until I was about 16 and that took, still took me two years to get that $10 back or $20 back <laughs> but I was always competitive I played lacrosse baseball um, and uh, but the first time that I walked into a pool room uh, it was in Victoria BC and I, uh, I went bowling with my father and um, uh, uh, after about five minutes I heard this noise and it was you know the, you know, the cracking of balls I guess you know it turned out to be and I was down a staircase winding thing went around and I saw the you know, the table like this with the shade you know and the frills hanging down the you know and the colored balls and the beautiful cloth and uh, and a fellow uh, hitting the black ball in the side pocket and uh, he made the black ball and a big groan went up and uh, about four guys got up and threw money on the table oh. And I, I was like, I couldn't believe that it, how beautiful it looked. It still looks that that great to me every time I see it. It's a bit more lit up now, like for TV lights, etc. But I've just been following that ever since. I didn't realize it was a world championship until I was about 18 or so. And uh, the only yardstick I had to go by was uh, one famous uh, Canadian player, George Chenier, um, who, who's also in the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame for for a snooker. So he's my idol, and basically I. I got to Winnipeg one time, and uh, he was in Toronto, and I, I went broke there, and I had to hop a freight train okay. in, in the second engine, you know, like it wasn't outside kind of thing or in a boxcar, but the second engine, and uh, uh, finally got in, you know, to see him play, and I heard all these stories about how invincible he was, and the first shot he played, he missed it, and I went, yes, like this, you know, because <laughs> it's hope for me, right. and a few people looked around like, like this kind of thing, but I was always hooked. I was... Uh, you know, uh, when I was first going to the pool room, I uh, on a bus and trying to cut the, you know, like the right hand edge of telephone poles into barbershop windows and stuff as the bus is moving and 
angles, and I just, I've just dreamt about it ever since. I've had a couple of dreams uh, two weeks before um, I, I've uh, made my 147, which was the first perfect game. I had a dream two weeks previous to that that I do it in the World Championship, and and I did it two weeks later. And I just, I've sort of, you know, my whole life's been a dream. It wasn't uh, uh, that easy to start off with, but. You know, I, I just followed. I, I just wanted to play and and uh, watch uh, and talk to good players. And uh, there was no coaching schemes. I just fell into the love of my life uh, before I met the love of my life. And, uh, you know, I just followed it. I never, uh, I did for a little while think, how can you hate something so much and then love it, uh, you know, even more. So. so on that note there, what exactly about the sport do you love so much? Well, I love the, uh, you know, I love the fact that you have to s sort of stand back and have a strategy of what you're going to be doing. And then uh, uh, when you're walking into a shot, it's got to be the same all the time. Uh, you know, I love the fact that the table's rectangular. I love the, ta uh, uh, the fact that I can have my own cue and, you know, have the best tip that's ever made on the best cue that's ever made and, you know, on the best conditions there have ever been. And I know that if I'm on TV, that I'm making a lot of money. But you know, I'm not. I know I'm not making a lot right now. But as you can see, it's a pleasure talking right. to. Of course. Yeah. So you said that you're coaching now. What's your biggest advice to people that are starting out? Well, there is. Uh, like you've got to. Uh, like you, uh, you have to get your cue through straight. A lot of people don't pay any attention to what's going on with the cue. They're really sort of goal orientated. They're they're shooting the cue ball and they're anxious to see, you know, if the ball that they're shooting is going to go in before they even hit the cue ball. So they get like a little bit anxious. So, um, you know, even like with some people, I still say, well, if you get a bit anxious, like just to look at the cue ball, you know, like providing that you're aimed correctly, it takes your mind off the, you know, the doubtful things that might, you know, like appear in your mind, but getting the cue through straight and keeping your head still. It, uh, it takes a little while to get used to that, but uh, uh, I can help almost anybody. Right. Well, so Snooker Canada, our goal here is to kind of elevate the sport in this country. Do you think that if this sport was on national television regularly, that people would tune in? I think they would, yeah. I think, well, they've got to get, um, you know, they have to let people know what, what the rules are. Like, it sort of has to be a bit of a crash course. I mean, I was, I played so much in, in the UK that I became the grandmother's favorite. Now the grandmothers had their favorites. They knew the rules, and they, uh, you know, uh, almost knew that if a person was playing the wrong shot, and that's the kind of situation that you have to get. It's almost like you have to put that, you know, uh, thing. Well, there's 18 holes in golf, and, it, and you know, you know, this is a sand trap. This is it. It's a very, uh, you know, like it's a very demanding game. You. It's uh, like compared to pool, it's you know, people almost hit a wall to a certain extent. But um, you, you know, like you just have to get the youngsters playing. We have to have pockets that are a little bit bigger to start off with. Like you, like in golf, you don't want the uh, you know like beginners playing off the back tees on a golf course. You want them playing on a little pitch and putt course and have some fun to start them off. Like the first tee things that they have in golf down the states. Like you just start off and pretty basic stuff. Snooker is a very demanding game. But, yep, maybe start off playing pool, but even the pool players say that this is the most demanding game in the world, and, and this is the one that gets the most TV coverage, the most countries play it, the most prize money, and the most television coverage. I mean, the World Championships, 17 days long, they get 145 hours of TV coverage. So look at it, eight hours a day, and uh, uh, you know, it's fantastic. So you had a pretty famous, hilarious interaction with Don Cherry when he asked you about the difference between pool and snooker. Can yeah. you describe that for me? Well, it was uh, yeah a lot of fun. He uh, well he um, um, he sent a limo for my wife and my son and my mother-in-law at the time from Markham. Took us out to um, um, Hamilton, where his place was, the Grapevine. And anyway, so he wants to get dressed up in my tuxedo, and uh, so I got the. You know, the shoes from David's, suits from Lou Miles, and, you know, Yves Saint Laurent's shirts. It's sort of like, like pretty basic, the black stuff. And then there's, you know, like, Don wasn't actually wearing the, you know, like the drapes and all that stuff then. But he was dressed well, but he had a, you know, uh, uh, when I was introduced, he said, okay, well, let's have it, uh, right? He's not from Kingston, but it's Cliff Thorburn, you know, good friend of mine, world champion snooker player. Well, come on in, Cliff, I gotta go down, I sit down. 
and I got the tuxedo on, the patent leather shoes. He's got the, you know, the the very checkerboard sports jacket with the tie and everything. How oh, Don is with the pen in his collar. And and he says, uh, right, Cliff, he says, well, let's get right into it. He says, well, first of all, he says, you smell really good, you know. And, you know, so I'm sort of going, well, well, that's okay. Well, that's sort of nice, Don, but, you know, I didn't need that one. He says, right, let's get right to it. He says, right, he says, what's the difference between pool and snooker? Right? I said, well, Don, I said, that's pool. This is snooker. <laughs> like this, you see. And he said, well, who told you to say that? He said, right, as a matter of fact, we'll be right back. You know, <laughs> like this. He did, like he, like he was stuck for words, yeah. you know. That's hilarious. And he was great, though. But, yeah. you know, we took it a while, and we were friends after that. But, yeah. And he's done so much for, for sport and can, well, you know, right. I kind of, you know, uh, let alone hockey, you know. Right. So. Well, it was an absolute pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much for chatting with us, and we hope My to pleasure. see you back here soon. Thank you very much. Me too. Thanks. We have got Ken Reed here from Sportsnet. So, Ken, tell me, do you like snooker? I love snooker. You know what? As a kid, we had a pool table in my basement. One of my dad's best friends, Ralph Power, had a snooker table. So when we were kids, we were eight, nine years old, so we played in our pool table. And then we went to my friend's Ralph's house, and his snooker table seems like this <laughs> giant thing where we, we couldn't hit the ball from one end to the other. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess I play a little snooker. We, uh, Cliff just did me some trick shots, so it was a lot of fun. So what specifically about the sport do you like? You know what, I just like it's a, it's a sport where you can just kind of hang around with your buddies. It's kind of like golf, kind of like curling. No one's out to hurt one another. If you play men's league hockey, you're 35 years old, there's a guy who's like, yo, you ticked me off, and you're trying to get him. In snooker, you're, you're just playing with your buddies, so it's a good social sport. So if, if Snooker Canada was to launch something where there'd be games going on, is that something you'd be interested in watching at all? I, I'd watch it, yeah. I'd... I, 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 I'd like for it to be more interactive. Like if Cliff could get a buddy, just a normal guy, and play with him in a league, like Cliff and Ken, or Cliff and you, I think that would be really hilarious. I'm sensing the start of a new show here. It, it could be. You know what? Maybe we're under a new reality television <laughs> show right here. But no, I just think snooker's a good game because it's a very social sport, like curling. You know, you can just go out. You don't have to be the best to play it. Everybody can play it. That's what I like about it. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> After three days here at the Gentlemen's Expo, we have discovered there is a lot of knowledge on Snooker Canada right here in this building. And if Snooker were to be played on national TV here in Canada, it would surely be a hit. We want to thank the Gentlemen's Expo for having us this year, and we can't wait to be back here next year.